Good kitten internet. Uh, apologies for the dark darkness. If you are just looking for a comparison of the versions of the game Pirates, uh, go ahead and take a look at the timestamps down below. I have them all timestamped out, linked together, for my at least attempts at trying to run different versions of Pirates. I didn't run all of them, but well, there's a lot. For the rest of you, hi! So in my life update video, oh, and um, I just don't have lights on in here right now to speak of, and I didn't bother putting up the green screen. So in my last video, I had, in my last life update video, I should say, I had mentioned Sid Meier's Pirates as an option. And I wanted to do a little recording, kind of a, like a demo slash sizzle reel for Pirates. <clears throat> Except then I had a thought of, well, which one? The one that I played as a kid was the DOS version, but that wasn't even the original version. And then things got weird. You'll notice how freaking long this video is. I am going through a whole bunch of different versions of this game. Yeah, and let's explain why. So let's go ahead and switch over to my other scene where I can show you the Wikipedia page for Pirates. The reason why I wanted to go over this is that it's complicated. So let's go down to the port section. So first off, the original was Commodore 64. The Commodore 64 version, which I did actually record down below. You can see the timestamps or you can just play through the entire thing in roughly the order that I did this in. Um, everything else is a port. So it went from Commodore 64 to the Apple II to IBM PC. You'll notice it's not actually DOS. That's because it's what's called a PC booter game. PC booter games, for reference, are they don't actually require you to have an operating system that you boot to first. You boot directly to the floppy to play the game. Kind of more like the way a console works, actually. Uh, the downside being that you have to run it off of disk. You can't install it to a hard drive or anything. But we'll get to why that's a problem in a bit. Anyway, um, there's also the Apple II GS version, the Mac version, the Amstrad CPC version, the Atari ST version, the Amiga version, and a version on the NES of all things. Although the NES version replaced tobacco with crops. Uh, if I remember correctly, the DOS version actually has slaves as a cargo method for one of the times. Uh, anyway, so there was a hacked version of the DOS version that was actually, or of the PC version that was allowed to be run from DOS. And that's actually the version that you can get from GOG today for reference. And we'll also be going over that because, oh boy, did I have some problems. So, those are the ports for Sid Meier's Pirates. There's absolutely no other ports whatsoever. Oh, right, there was a re-release. So, the re-release version of the game started on MS-DOS and then got ported to the Sega Genesis, the Commodore CD32, which is actually an Amiga 1200 for reference, and Windows 3.x. If I still had a 32-bit operating system, like the 32-bit version of Windows 10, for instance, I could actually run the Windows 3.x version of Sid Meier's Pirates natively. It would actually work. It would only run at 640 by 480 though, so that's a terrible idea, but need to be a little window, but I could do it. I'm not going to though, of course. Um, so I also recorded some versions of the actual, actually I recorded all three of the other ones, the MS-DOS, the Sega Genesis, and the CD32 version. And then there's the re-re-release. So there is an enhanced remake that was created in 2004 called Sid Meier's Pirates. And Sid Meier's Pirates, sometimes known as Live the Life, was released on, oh, it's just on Microsoft Windows. So what's the show button here? Ah! So let me explain. So the original version of the re-remake is was released for Microsoft Windows. Uh, you can actually play it today. I own the version on Steam. Uh, I'd recommend buying the GOG version instead, but still, you can buy it, you can run it on modern computers. There's also the Xbox version, the original Xbox. You can run the original Xbox version on a variety of platforms. So it is one of the backwards compatible games. So you can stick your original Xbox version of the game into an Xbox 360. You can... That's actually what the 360 version is. It's the digital download version of the original Xbox version. So it's just using backwards compatibility mode. And that game actually still works on the Xbox series controllers 
and the Xbox One controllers. So you can play that with a current Xbox today even. Although I'm assuming that you can't just load it from CD and you have to download it. But I don't know. I, the only Xbox I own is an Xbox 360. So I could actually buy the Xbox version and play it, but I don't have it today. I'm not going to try downloading it. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, there was a release for the PSP. I do own a PSP. I could actually play it on original hardware if I had any idea whatsoever where in the world my PSP went. I haven't seen it in five years now or it's just gone. I could emulate the PSP version, but why? Um, there's a Mac OS X version that doesn't work anymore, strangely enough. Uh, there was a hard compatibility break between Mac OS versions where it at a certain point, it refused to ever run a 32-bit application again, and Sid Meier's Pirates is a 32-bit application, so you can't run it in modern versions of macOS. Linux version. There is an actual Linux version of this game. I have no idea where it is. I have found very little about it. You can just run the Windows version in Wine, though, and it actually works just fine. Sid Meier's Pirates actually uses the same engine as Civilization IV, strangely enough which is actually the same engine as Civ 3, also strangely enough. Anyway, um, so it's actually really easy to emulate. That's not that big of a deal to run it on Linux or SteamOS. That's exactly how it's working in SteamOS. There's a Wii port. That's a thing. There's an iOS port, and there's a freaking Windows Phone port. Who uses Windows Phone? People didn't even use Windows Phone even back when it was released, never mind now. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of different versions of the game. A lot of different versions. So, yeah, this video is basically me going through each of the versions. So, or each of the versions that I'm willing to try to run. If somebody wants me to try to emulate, um, like, an Xbox or a PSP, let me know, and I can try running that as well. I do have a reasonable computer. But there's a couple of things I wanted to call out. So, usually, when it comes to games that I do Let's Plays of, I make sure that I own the game in advance. Depending on which port this is for, that is not possible for me. So I already own the uh, DOS version of Pirates and Pirates Gold. I bought it off of GOG, and I owned the original PC booter version of Pirates way back when, although that was on a five and a quarter inch floppy, and we kind of threw those out when we no longer had a device that can read them. Oh boy, am I mad about that. Of course, I probably fried all of them by punching them anyway, but whatever. Um... So I can't do that. The Commodore 64 version, it's possible to buy. Um, one moment. It's possible to buy, but take a look at that price. Yep. So that's not going to happen. Um, going down, I'm not trying any of the Apple versions because those were mostly monochrome anyway. I've never used an Amstrad CPC. I know nothing about it. I'm not even going to try. Uh, the PC-88 version is entirely in Japanese. It looks a lot like the Atari ST version, which I have actually seen. Um, the Atari ST version is... I don't even think I can find it on eBay. Let's see. If I can spell, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Has it even been sold on eBay recently? Yes. Strangely enough, for a reasonable price even, but uh, some of these started getting ridiculous priced really fast. So I'm not going to be buying the Atari ST version if I play that one. Also, you'll see why I'm not going to be doing that. There's an Amiga version. This is even worse. This is so much worse. So much worse. Now, there have been a couple of Almost reasonable price ones, and then it gets even worse and even worse. So I am not going to be buying the Amiga version. It, it's possible my partner actually owns it. I'll ask them about it after I record this, but I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, NES version. I think that one might be easier to find. <laughs> okay. Maybe not. Maybe it's still... I mean, that one's not too badly priced. 
I know I have it set for sold items. What if I just do what's currently for sale? Okay. That's expensive, but doable. But I don't own an NES anymore anyway. So that's kind of out. Pirate's Gold, again, I own the DOS version, so that's not a problem. Um, I have a pirated version of the Windows 3.x version as well somewhere. Actually, I think I might have bought it once upon a time. But it was on floppy, and all of my floppies fried because I touched them. Uh, so that's not going to happen. Pirates for the Sega Genesis is possible to buy. It's expensive, but it's possible. Really expensive. Uh, um, I don't even want to know on this one, do I? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to be buying that any of the versions that I don't already own of Pirates if I do end up playing it. Uh, when it comes to this one, uh, it's pretty easy to find the Xbox version of Pirates. Uh, and the PSP version of Pirates is not too hard to find, if I remember right. I haven't actually looked at that one. PSP. PSP. Seriously? Stupid eBay. And not Pirates of the Caribbean. Sid Meier's Pirates. Yeah, it's not that hard to find. I've spotted that in person not that long ago. So, if... Push comes to shove, I can do that. I can do the Wii version. Once more, not too hard to find. Pretty cheap. That's 10 bucks. I'm not too concerned about that. Don't ask about the versions, like the iOS version or anything like that. So yeah, um, a whole bunch of pirate things. That's what this video is all about. I'm not even necessarily going to end up playing it for recording. I don't know if it's even going to be all that entertaining. And honestly, the most entertaining version is probably the newest one. Okay, I just wanted to do that. I'll talk to you later, Internet, and have fun watching me go through all of the versions of Pirates and struggle through a lot of them. Bye. Oh, might as well just do that one. Bye. Hello. Let's try playing the original, shall we? Once more, apologies for this being slightly blurry because of the scaling, since once more I decided to start recording all of these at 1080p for some weird reason, and yeah, 1440p would have been a better option, it's a better integer scale, so don't mind the blobby text too much. Uh, this is the original version of Sid Meier's Pirates, this is the Commodore 64 release, and I know I said once more, but well, it's weird. I'm not necessarily going to be putting these in the correct order, so to speak. Uh, is it actually running? It is says it's ready. First time I've used the Commodore 64 emulator, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, let's see. Or Commodore 64. Let's see. Do, do, do. Work. I know how to make this work on a real 64. The 64, that is. One moment. Let me figure this out. All right. This emulator actually works. Uh, it's Still using RetroArch, but it's slightly different. But I wanted to show you what it looks like for the cracked part. Because I consider this absolutely hilarious and awesome. That's right. Ah, this is a game that was released in 1987. And somebody didn't crack it until after the release of Portal. Or at least this crack wasn't until after the release of Portal. Sorry, I found that hilarious. Go ahead and skip.
So the crack also introduces some, um, and yes, I have the mouse cursor on. Um, it also introduces some cheats involved, which is interesting. But this is the original version of Pirates. Notice it's significantly more colorful than the DOS version. And the music is way better than the PC speaker version, but the chip was much better than PC back then. As usual, we are Mr. Incognito. I am using the gamepad that I have for reference, so it is using joystick. It appears to be joystick and keyboard, just like the P uh, the PC loader version. All right, treasure fleet. Well, this is cracked. I shouldn't have to do this. Find out. Yep. We'll just accept any input. So in some ways it's graphically superior, and in other ways it's graphically inferior. We'll admit, it's nice to see more than four colors. E the EGA version, I believe, is 16 colors, but it's still a really weird palette for some reason. I don't know why. Also, because I'm not using DOSBox, I can actually use the D-pad for things that I don't want a diagonal for. Yes, I stab you again anyway, because... Although, for some reason, this is currently off my screen entirely. Or, not entirely. Like, the bottom part of my screen is actually the bottom part of the white window that you see. Don't know why. Okay, so we're in Port Royal. But there are some sound effects, which is interesting. But there's no music. Governor's... Looking more pixelated because it is running at a lower resolution. But I'm doing the same types of things. Also, it's nowhere near as responsive. Like, sometimes it's taking me multiple button presses for it to recognize. Look how slow this loads. Ah. Interesting. Ooh, this is really low resolution. Fail ho! Loop? Probably not. Dutch or Spanish. Oh, it's the cowardly pirate Major Alexander. Well, let's lose fast. Chin. Oh yeah, those graphics right there. Okay, so I'm using that as a mouse, basically. It's interesting, because it doesn't have a mouse. As usual, right here. I am playing on the easiest difficulty for reference. Which is good, because I am not good at the DOS version of this game. Never mind any of the weird ports that I've been trying. I'm wild. Could be one more hit? No, two more. Oh, it's Legendary Pirate. Well, that kind of makes sense. 
Major Alexander. Thank you for the new ship. I have no control while the Diddy's playing. I have control. Uh, another sloop. Enterprise crew, take the sloop. Uh, you're just going for ransom. Oh, wow, that's a little clunky. Foods, goods, sugar, and cannon. Go back to Port Royal really fast. Here now. Merchantman. The flying English colors. We'll hail for news. What is that sound effect? I don't understand the C-64 sound effects. Governor have anything new to say? Butter front? Or, sorry, um, Ensign? Yep, I am now an Ensign. But yeah, the C64 version, it's a very similar game to all the rest. In some ways, better graphics. In other ways, so much worse graphics. Whereabouts of... Ooh, Major da Silva. Evil Spaniard, of course. Requirement. In Santa Catalina. All right. Can I actually save? Yes. So yeah, this version's actually a tape slash diskette version. I think it's diskette. Ooh, four save slots. Aw, yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to show the C64 version. Okay, bye. All right, and this is the DOS version of Pirates. Specifically, the first release of Pirates. Um, you'll notice that the graphics at the moment are actually CGA. That's the way I played Pirates way back when. But we will grace ourselves with the benefit of having EGA graphics. We're going to use a joystick. Left. Right. Lower left. Lower right. So the DOS version of Pirates doesn't actually use the mouse at all. It is joystick or game or joystick or keyboard only. We're going to go ahead and start a new career. No special. That was the PC speaker, by the way. No, I'm not joking. That was legitimately the... This game doesn't use a sound card. It uses a PC speaker. It plays little ditties like that from time to time. We have no name. See? Told you. Mr. Incognito is the default name. Or I may not have told you because I don't know what order these are going in. Apprentice. Skillet fencing. We have the exact same dialogue as before, but you'll notice a lack of pictures. But there's the picture. We are supposed to know when the Silver Train arrives in Portobello in 1660. Um, I actually don't know if this version is hacked or not. January, early in the month. Okay, I had failed the check. As the captain is going to kick my posterior, I believe. So this is basically the warning of, hey, look, you messed up, but if you want, we'll let you play the game. This is effectively like a demo version of the game. I find that really interesting, but I am actually going to. It's a different ditty. 
ever notice that? But, okay, so that, okay, Caracas and 1660 Treasure Fleet. I have it somewhere because I own this game on GOG. So, Treasure Fleet, 1660, Caracas, early September. Early in the month. The seamen are really buccaneers! So, yeah. This is actually the way it's supposed to be, is that you're actually doing a um, mutiny against the captain. I, the Amiga version doesn't actually tell you that, and I don't. I think they might have given it up in Pirate's Gold. But because this is a DOS game, well, technically a PC booter, you actually booted from Floppy to play this. That actually means that we only have two buttons. Travis Gamepad had the special ability to have four buttons. I'm stabbing the captain repeatedly because I want to. So yes, this is what the graphics of Pirates looked like. Oh, they were terrible. But keep in mind, this game's from 1987. Right? We have an English governor. The Spanish city is a few days to the northwest. We're in St. Kitts. Interesting. Okay. Few days northwest, a few days southeast, and a few days north. Dutch. Oh, so if I am at war with the Spanish and Dutch, I'm going to be heading north, north by northwest. Was it the governor? See, you still have some loading time problems like this. Or did it crash? Uh. I think the game crashed. Well, that's not useful at all. Yeah, it's just not responding. Cool. Guess can try a different version of the game. I have multiple. Okay, one moment. All right, trying again. Uh, this time we're in Port Royal. Santiago is a few days north. Rove is a few days east, and St. Eustace, uh, Est Estatius, many days east. Got it. I think going north makes the most sense. See if it crashes in the same spot. So far, it seems to be crashing in a completely different spot, which is here. Cool. I'm gonna... Need to check to see if I own the GOG version. I think I do. Uh, uh, pirates. Uh, that's only the remake. GOG doesn't actually have the original? Huh. Well, I guess I don't own the GOG version. I actually own, well, owned, past tense, the real version of this game, but... I may end up just having to find a different download or just buying it online. Anyway, you can tell how well this is working. Uh, try another one. All right, trying this again. This is actually a different version of the DOS version. Uh, you'll notice that this is a bit blurrier. That's because I'm stretching the window even further. I'll worry about that later. I just This is the version off of GOG. And yes, there was a version off of GOG. I don't know why my search didn't find it. And yes, I do already own it. And it's actually included with the GOG version of Pirate's Gold, which I'll talk about another time. So, I'm hoping that this one works better. At the very least, it doesn't seem to be as buggy so far. But I'm in Port Royal. We're visiting the governor, and hey, look, the governor actually comes up. We're at war with Spanish and Dutch. Also, Port Royal is in Jamaica. Regardless of what I may have already said or will say, because I don't know the order that these videos will be stitched together. Anyway. So yeah, so we are at war with the Spanish and Dutch, as usual. Why, yes, I am a promising sea dog. Ooh, treasure map. So this is what the treasure maps look like. 
So somewhere near Havana, we have a treasure. We need to match up the map with reality and then dig for treasure. Okay. Hmm. Pirates have been busy this randomization. Also, England really doesn't like Spain. Wait. States are in an order. What? <laughs> okay. Whatever. This is what the EGA version of Pirates looks like. Much prettier than the... A Dutch frigate? I'm going to die if I fight that, aren't I? Those are the sound effects that I expect to hear. You will notice that they have 23 guns. I have eight. I am terrible at aiming. This is really tiny for me on the screen for reference, so that does not help anything. Nope. Notice, that's still not damaged, even though I have slammed into it a few times. And if I were to try to charge right now, I would die. Because I'm moving backwards. Because it has 137 men still. I am good, I am not that good. At fencing, that is. I need to get it at least down to my level before I start to have rushing in, basically. Fortunately, they're running battle sails, which means that they're not going to. Always better to present a smaller broadside to the enemy. I'm actually doing fairly well, all things considered. Okay, they actually have some damage now. I barely dodged that, and I'm not going to dodge that. Ow. So the whole battle sails thing is basically their sails are down at the moment, thus their sails aren't going to take as much damage as normal. But they're also going to move like garbage, especially on a frigate. You'll notice that they're they're below double now, at least, but I am still having problems hitting them. My only benefit is the fact that my ship is much more agile than theirs. So it's easier for me to make sure I'm not in line of gunfire. Almost time to ram them. That was...
was not oh, I that worked fine. down to 8 guns and 62 9 men yeah I know riveting action here I mean this is pirates I'm going to end up having oh they lost a mast I prefer to not actually sink the ship so let's go ahead and ram them Maybe they'll strike their colors. Nope. Yeah. I'm still considered to be at a disadvantage. Now. So, the... Battle is still going on in the background, and that's the reason why you typically don't want to ram somebody who is has more soldiers than you. It's because they're just rolling numbers in the background. And as your troops die, you get worse and worse morale. So I might end up winning, but I'm not going to have any troops left. And I have to go all the way to wild morale or drop them to one man. Of course, if I get dropped to one man, which is certainly possible, then and either way, if you're down to one, uh, one person left in force, that means that your next hit you will lose, no matter what. Now, it is still possible to perfectly fence. I am not that good at fencing. I barely remember how to play the game, to be honest. Alright, now they're in panic. I only need to hit them a couple more times. Uh, the reason why I have to hit them so often is that I'm choosing Rapier. Rapier is the fastest weapon, but at the same time, it's also the weakest. So it's the fastest, longest range, and weakest. That's actually the difference between the weapons. Rapier is the... Oh, I win. Barely. I lost half of my men. Which is actually good for morale, strangely enough. Damn. All right. Yes, send a prize crew. We're keeping everything and immediately turning back to go to town. Good thing I'm at war with the Dutch, right? <sighs> okay. Yes, please take the soldiers. I need more people. Uh, no, I do not care who they are. We are just going back to town. Sail into harbor. Is it trade with a merchant? Sell the frigate. I'd get more money if it weren't for the fact that um it was heavily damaged. All of this. There. Visit the governor. Ooh, an urgent mission. I will accept the mission. I must deliver the secret document to my half-brother who is acting as a spy for our noble king in the city of Saint Martin. His future depends upon your haste. So yeah, you can get secret missions and so on. And I am now Ensign. 
Ooh, Duke Latore in Caracas. Ooh, she's... Uh, the young daughter is currently being courted by an admiral. I am an ensign. There is no way I should be proposing marriage or doing anything other than making polite conversation. Anyway. Yeah, this is the way it's supposed to be played. Head and save. And yeah, I can have this run using my normal. Save as game one. So this is actually a hacked version of the previous one that I was playing. It's not just that it's newer. It's the fact that it's hacked to run in real DOS rather than in a PC loop booter at PC booter. That's probably why this runs better. Anyway, just wanted to show that. Okay, bye. All right, we've got another version of old. This is the Atari ST version. I have never run anything on an Atari ST emulator or ever seen a real Atari ST in my life. This is entirely new to me. So this is Pirate's Gold. But the Atari ST version apparently has one, well, obviously its own music. And two, it's supposed to be probably the most readable out of all of them. I have no idea how to get through the credits. Again, this is the first time I've ever touched anything like this. Maximize. Ah, maximize is a bad idea. It does not handle scaling. Yeah, that's actually relatively clear and easy to read. Now, admittedly, I'd be cropping off the bottom part if I could. Like that. The bottom part's kind of unnecessary. Entered. Hat. That's not the way I wanted you to do that, but sure, we'll go with that. All right. As usual, we're accepting defaults or everything. Sorry, this might... I don't think this is Pirate's Gold. I think this is Pirates. Oh, what the... Uh, apparently, we're going to be ones because some key is being held down and I don't know what. Yeah, this is original Pirates, not Pirate's Gold. All right, Silver Train, 1660, Maracaibo. Maracaibo. I still have that up. All right. Two. Uh, I do have that open. Where are we talking about? Uh, Silver Train, Maracaibo. 1960. That's late April. Yep. But this is apparently using a mouse, even though it's the... Okay. So, it must be related in some way to the port of the Amiga, because the Amiga version also uses the mouse. I'm definitely only using the mouse, which is a good way of controlling this game in my mind. Although, it's a little awkward to use the mouse. You can actually see the edges of the screen now, can't you? Mouse cursor. Uh, now it's falling to the bottom. What is going on? Oh, this might be a problem. This is more me not knowing how in the world to use the emulator. Uh, drive is not responding? What? Um, I'm trying to hit it while it's falling and doing a bad job. Right. Hold on. I know this is going to be impossible for you to see, but I'm thinking this might be a little... 
Nope. Uh, okay. Like I said, this is probably just emulator woe rather than game problem. I'm assuming. Cool. Oh, and now the mouse is moving correctly. But it seemingly lost its drive. I am so confused right now. One moment, let's see if I can figure this out. All right, we're trying this again. In theory, I... In so the way I originally loaded this was pointing it at the zip file that had both diskettes in it. Now I'm actually pointing one diskette at drive A, one diskette at drive B. Because that's actually the way you can do things. And apparently we have to wait through this. Yeah, like I was saying, I've never actually used a real Atari ST before, and this is the first time I've even used an emulated Atari ST, so I kind of just grabbed the first emulator I could find to try to load it. Uh, the cord didn't work properly in Retro Arch for some reason. All right. No. I'm English. Still doing that. This time we've got a three in there. Oh, I bet it's the joystick. Oh, hold on a moment. I, I know how to fix that. So it turns out it wasn't the joystick. What it is is the, the mouse movement. So as long as my trackball was still, it was perfectly fine. It's probably an emulation glitch. I do have the... Hey, soon, please don't rub yourself up against the mouse. All right, once more, let's try this again. Hopefully this time with more working. Treasure Fleet arrives in the Florida Channel 1660. Uh, Treasure Fleet. 1660, Florida Channel is late March, and it's doing that weird thing again. It's from the alt tab. At. It's clicking on things. That just <sighs> do not like this emulator. I mean, again, I don't know what I am doing, and that's a good chunk of the problem, but. This is obnoxious. It's been seven minutes and I have not gotten through the opening menus. But this is definitely original pirates and not pirates gold. Okay. I mean, the Amiga had both pirates and pirates gold on it. Although pirates gold is for CD32, but that's really an Amiga 1200 in disguise. So I can see that. And the Atari ST and the Amiga are very similar devices. In fact, I think they're actually using the same hardware. Like, same CPU, not the rest of the hardware. Mega hardware was very customized. Okay, let's try this again. Note, I am not hitting any keys other than enter. But the moment I move, that's when it does the weird stuff. Okay, well, this time I actually have the little instruction manual to my left where I don't have to alt-tab, so let's try it this way. Uh, Silver Train, Rio de Hacha, 1660. Uh, that is early May. Okay, I think it's just crashing. Alright, that's enough of the Atari ST. I'm done dealing with this. This was a mistake. Perhaps another time. All right, so this is a quick recording for Sid Meier's Pirates. Um, 
I'm just manually scaling everything, so it might be a bit fuzzy. To be expected. Um, mostly I'm trying to just show how freaking slow this is. So this is the Amiga version. Um, I'm using the emulator FSUAE. And it is loading everything from floppy disk. I cannot figure out how to get this to run from a hard drive. Or hard device. Fake hard drive, because everything's emulated. Including the floppy speeds, because why not? So this is a hacked version of Pirates. I do not own the game for reference. But this is good enough for a test. And yes, the audio that you're hearing really is an emulated floppy drive audio. Because that's what I needed for my emulator. Be reminded how bad it was when we had to use floppy disks for everything. Ugh. I'm gonna drop the game audio down a bit so it doesn't overwhelm my microphone. So for reference, the Amiga version of Pirates is much prettier than the DOS version of Pirates. Which in turn is prettier than the Commodore 64 version of Pirates, I think. But keep in mind, I am trying to skip through as much of this as possible. It means, yes, the opening credits I cannot skip through because it is loading the floppy disk. See? Now I can go. Uh, it is both mouse and joypad controlled and keyboard controlled. I'm not sure if the... Gamepad simulating a keyboard, or the keyboard simulating a gamepad in this case, but uh, apparently the Amiga version is meant to be controlled with a floppy, or with with a mouse. So starting career. Starts the English. And Mr. Incognito. That's the default name on the real version of Pirates. Obviously, whoever hacked this edited that. There's a few things that they've edited, unfortunately. Like, for instance, this check. <sighs> I'll use the rapier. And this is actually where my normal emulator, WinUAE, crashes. It actually gives a guru meditation at this point. The first fight's supposed to be, as long as you pass the copy protection, which is the part that they hacked out, you're supposed to win the first fight no matter what you do, so. Okay. Um, but you can see just how long the load times are for everything. Okay, Trinidad is a few days to the south, Martinique is a few days northwest, and St. Estes is many days to the north. Where am I starting at? Barbados, okay. Last time I tried loading this, I ended up starting in Port Royal. Go ahead and visit the governor. All I'm trying to do is get to a battle. Or with the Spanish and the Dutch. Visit a tavern. Mostly to recruit some people. You see how long these load times are? Everything that I do, I end up having to do this. Okay. okay. Leave town. It's a couple of days to the south. This would absolutely be the type of game that I would want to load up a map. Ooh, that's weird to do with a trackball. But there are random events that happen, like this. For instance, there's a sail on the horizon. We're in English waters at the moment, so chances are that whatever the boat is, is English. But not necessarily. It could be a pirate. It could always be a pirate. So we're going to investigate what this is. Merchantman? 
Ah, frigate. Ooh, I definitely can't take on a frigate no matter what I do. So I'm just going to sail away. I'm in a sloop. And, and not a very well-equipped sloop at that. I'm sailing away and it's still forcing. Yep, it's a pirate hunter. And flying French colors? Why am I fighting a pirate hunter already? Go away. Not a pirate. Yeah. About to be one, but I'm not one yet. That, I believe, is a Spanish. Yep, we're in Spanish waters now. This is what we wanted. But do you see just the sheer amount of loading that we have? Bark? Yes, please. Those are always Spanish or pirate. In Spanish colors. I'm English. We're at war with the Spanish. Let's go. So for reference, this is emulating an Amiga 500. So a bark is basically very similar to a sloop, only slower. They can hold more capacity, but slower, like I said. That's why I'm actually slightly faster. So what I'm doing is what's called tacking into the wind. You can actually see my speed over on the left. So the winds are from the east southeast. Are you trying to do this with a trackball is a little weird. Probably be using controller. I am gaining on them, but not by much. They're doing a fairly good job tacking it. I was hoping to damage their sail. There we go. Now they have some sail damage. That should slow them down. Ah, it has, yeah. Keep thinking that my sloop's on the left because I'm visibly on the left on the screen. My sloop's on the right. So I am catching, I am gaining on them by quite a bit now. Wrong button. Okay, missed. Oh, I actually hit. Surprised. Uh, like I said, trying to do this with a trackball is really weird. Uh, the DOS version doesn't even use a mouse, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're screwed. They're probably going to strike their colors, would be my guess. Find out if the game didn't just lock up. Oh, there we go. Yep, they've struck their colors. We got in your hold. Uh, no, we're going to plunder and sink. We're not going to send a prize crew for that. We want loot. I'm taking your cannon. Taking food. And we'll split up goods and sugar. There we go. So, yeah. This is basically Sid Meier's Pirates. Um, just doing the short recording. Oops. And you are a Spanish fort, correct? Oh, it's actually not a fort. 
well, this is just a demo anyway. So since there's no fort, it's immediately a sword fight, of which I'm good at. But unless the town is lowly defended, I'm going to get my posterior handed to me. That actually is lowly defended. So this is a mini game that is also representing the battle that's going on behind me. You don't get to see the battle in this version of the game. But you can actually tell from the morale and how what the force is remaining, how I'm doing. They're in a panic. They're going to lose. Yeah, they just surrendered. So I have sacked the town or captured. I'm not sure which. I'm assuming sack. I'm not actually sure how you do one versus the other, to be honest. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a sack. So the town had warning of your party's approach is because I attacked a ship first. I think that's the reason why. But that's still a lot. Unfortunately, I have no space in my hold, so I'm actually going to let them keep everything. If I attack them again, they would definitely have warning of my approach. But we're going to go sail back up to Barbados. Talk with the governor, and that will be the end of the quick test. Quick test, it's been 11 minutes, what the heck. Those are shoals, by the way. If I had a lesser ship, they would rip me up. We're in English waters, the ship. Merchantmen. Could be anybody's. If it's Spanish, I'd like it. Nope, English. We're hailing for news. I, I said hail for news. What the heck, game? I did not want to attack you. We're just going to sail away. Pretend that never happened. Ah. Just trying to land. All right, sail into harbor. And the fort opens fire? What? Uh, this version of the game is really messed up. And I am dead. Anyway, that was a quick demo. That is Sid Meier's Pirates. All right, later. All right, talking about another one. I'll find this. This is the NES version of the game. It doesn't actually fit on my little display, does it? I guess I'll just shrink it for the time being. I still have everything set on the simulator, set for um, 1080p. Oh, bear with me. But this is, in fact, the same game. Okay, now we're going to start a new career. Buccaneer. We are in Mr. Incognito. The NES version does, in fact, have the same defaults. Apprentice, skillet fencing. I don't know why it's skipping through so fast. Oh, well, this is so much harder to read. Seriously, what the NES version looked like? I've never played the NES version. This is my first time trying. Well, fencing is faster, but faithful. All right, we're in Port Royal. Is it the governor? War with Spanish and Dutch. Tavern. I do like how it has music.
yeah, this looks very similar to the PC version. Batman, Batman colors. Two days now. Where we are going. Let us pause, select his menu, okay. That's fine. We don't have any maps. Ooh. Here in Santiago. Uh, no, we are not in here in Santiago. Oh, actually, it looks like the NES version is very faithful. All right. Spanish Bark. Let's go. I am shocked how faithful the NES version is. Usually NES ports are terrible. Oh, that's a direct facing. Whoops. But this actually looks to be... Yeah, we want full sales, not battle sales. Which I noticed I didn't have the ability to do on the Amiga version. I'm not sure why. You can tell that my loop is much faster than the bark. They've struck their colors. I didn't even hit them. Uh, yeah, I'll take that as a prize crew. That's fine. Taking everything. I'm going to take the same as well, right? Yeah, so far it actually looks like the NES might be the best one for me to try, since the DOS version's uh, broken, apparently. I don't want a second check. I do not want to exit. Probably pretty good. Party status. They're happy. They have tons of food. By the way, if you hang around a town too long, you're going to end up having pirate hunters. Hey, hi. Good expectations. Oh, there we go. Investigate. Merchantmen. Oh, and it's a pirate. Do not want to fight a pirate. Now I would lose. We have changed months, tenants. Ah, uh, it'd be a terrible idea, but that's fine. They have sail damage. I might actually be able to catch up, even though penances are faster. Lightly. Take me a little while to catch up. A leaking. Sinking. I mean, they're dead in the water at this point. They've struck their colors, though. Uh, no, we're going to sink that penance. So, whenever you capture a pirate, you can ask about the treasure fleet or the silver train, which are, um, fleets that have an abnormally large amount of money on them, which is usually nice. Or you can just hold the pirate for ransom. Uh, the pirate will jump ship in the event that anything happens. I think that's a good enough time. Let's head back to Port Royal. Oh, the NES version's actually not too bad. It has NES sound, and that's a little weird. But it has something, which is better than the PC version, which has no real music.
Fill into the harbor. Let's visit the governor. Hey, look! You are now an ensign. Congratulations. That creepy grin. Marquis Gonzalez knows where my sister is at. And Villa Hermosa. Where are they? Ooh. I have a daughter that I can speak with. I will make pleasant conversation. But visit the tavern, of course. Merchant. We are selling. Yeah, this is actually really similar to the Doth version, only prettier. And then sit with the merchant, sell the bark. I think we can only hold 22 guns on the ship anyway. But that's the NES version. It's actually not too bad. Uh, save. That's under check information. It's already a save here. Interesting. Alright. That's it for the NES version. Alright, and this is the DOS version of Pirate's Gold. I am, in fact, going to be playing this in English. Hmm. if it's on my screen. So you can tell that this is a much prettier version than the original DOS version. It has music. Green. There we go. Okay. It also has mouse controls. E, mouse. Uh, it does not have joystick controls, strangely enough. We are playing in the Buccaneer Heroes. We're playing as the English. We have all of the different skills. I mean, this is basically the same game. I am still Captain Incognito. Yep. This is the exact same dialogue. The Brethren of the Coast. This is actually, well, you can hear the keyboard that I'm pressing. I would need to probably not play using my blue, uh, blue switch keyboard. So instead of having any other stats, you just have flags that indicate. Now, this is a lot harder than I remember. Oh, I surrender. There. All right. Killing Masters takes you aside. Here in Port Royal, you'll be wanting to see the English governor and visit a tavern. The, z the men all be anxious for plunder and adventure, so you needn't. We needn't be sightseeing for too long. It is a little harder to read the font. I will admit. Again. I'm using the GOG deployment of DOSBox instead of my regular one, so it's going to be a little less crisp than normal. But we're in Port Royal. So rather than having a menu system, for this we actually have places that we click on. Which is nice. Go up to the governor. We are in fact at war with Spain and Holland. You notice it's not phrased as the Dutch and the Spanish. But we always need to visit the tavern. We can talk with unemployed sailors. Go ahead and sign them up. The tavern on the green. There are randomized tavern names in this game. Um, well, randomized in, like, they're not randomized each time that you play. I believe it's just randomized for game creation. Buy a map. 
There's a pirate treasure map somewhere near Santa Catalina. Heck if I know where that's at. Bartender gives us news. Flirt with the barmaid, of course. And I can spend pleasant evenings with the barmaid. All right, let's head out. Okay, so it is keyboard controlled. And zero controls for... Twistic. About going into here, do I have any options from the cabin? Exit game, captain's cabin, any of my travels, treasure maps, Maps of the Caribbean, Treasure Cave. Thing in my treasure cave. Logbook. Get the ship status. Of my sloop. Party status. The mouse is very slightly off, by the way. So it's a... Like, I can move left and right much quicker than up and down. That is not my trackball. That is actually just the way this works. Because DOS games actually had to write their own driver for our mouse options. They don't always work the same way. Avoid the shoals and start heading toward Santiago. Yeah, the game is much prettier than the DOS version, but it's really just a skin on the game. Not any significant differences in the game itself. This is Santiago. to find the ship. Like I said, sorry about the noise. I'm going to... If I end up playing this, I'm going to end up using... Softer keyboard. Sail ho! We have audio too. All right, investigate a frigate, an English frigate. Well, what's the latest news? At least these are in order. Nothing important. Why is there a frigate in the Shoals area? Random encounters. They're weird. There's Havana. Okay, Havana's on the so this is not gonna be an area that sail. Spanish will sail very often. A war galleon? A Spanish war galleon. Alright, let's die. Rude. Yeah, you can see how beat up my sloop is just from, like, one hit. I'm gonna die terribly. This is going way faster than the... On guard. Yeah, you can see how bad I'm doing already. I have three people left. I'm, it's just me now. The moment I get hit, I'm dead. And that's Pirate's Gold. At least the DOS version. I mean, not much else to it. Yep. Okay, see ya. Alright, this is another version of Pirate's. This one is technically the CD32 version of Pirates. There we go. And so you will notice that everything is going to be kind of embedded like that. 
Right, let's start a new career. We are basically doing the exact same thing as before, only really. Oh, that's awful. We're going to be Nidney. Right? You'll notice this is very similar, but with prettier graphics, but also no audio. That's weird. I was pretty sure this version had audio. Have the audio device hooked up properly? On guard! <laughs> You'll notice that, unlike the previous Amiga version, this one doesn't have awful load times, and that's because, well, it's a any version. Even though this is Pirate's Gold rather than Pirate's, which does have a few differences, I think. I'm honestly not sure. I've played a decent amount of both the... Well, huge amount of the original, but... Alright, we are in Port Royal this time. Um, a few days north is Santiago, a few days east is Petit Grove. And say to us, this is many days east. Okay. So, unlike in regular pirates, we don't have a menu system. We actually walk around in Port Royal. This is a really clunky system, by the way. But I can understand since this is. So, the CD32 is a consoleized version of the Omega 1200, even though it's technically. A Commodore CD32 and not an Amiga CD32, but that's okay. A promising sea dog, Mr. Nidney! Alright, so England's at war with Spain, Holland's at war with England. Gotcha. So these are actually randomly generated if you're not playing in a um, <coughs> timeline, specific timeline that is. Go visit the governor anyway, just. Yep, Spanish and Dutch. You can only visit the governor once per trip. Out. Being English, that means I have an English loop. My mouse does nothing. Yeah, so we don't have any music at all, but instead we have some voice effects. Wow. About on the horizon. What is it? Merchantman? What is it? English. I'm gonna go south. Or was wait, I've already forgotten where Santiago is. So as I've said in a previous video, what I would end up doing if I actually was playing this game for Let's Play is I would end up having a map of the Spanish main. Like that. We're over there. Problem is, I have no idea how to back out of this map. Oh, Bermuda. I have sailed to Bermuda before. It's ridiculous. I usually try to stay over in the uh, Bahamas area. But again, I don't know how to get out of this map. Oh, apparently like that. I didn't even know that button was mapped to anything. Okay. Alright. We're in unknown waters. Let's investigate. Merchantmen. Dutch merchantmen. We're at war with the Dutch. You know what that means. Them. The two ships crash together. Through the smoke, you spot the enemy captain approaching. Remember, we are proficient with... On guard. I'm not trying to be particularly good at this, by the way. So, once more, you get to see the battle progressing through the numbers. So they have 18 men remaining, I have 64 men. I should just say, call it dudes. Because there definitely were women in piracy. Um, 
yeah, we can send a prize crew for that. We're taking everything. Sure. So now you'll notice that our ship has turned into... Save that up with the menu? Yes. Right, this tells us our men. They are pleased. They have plenty of food. They have 76 days worth of food. And there's 67 men. Dudes. And that's apparently how I save. Personal status. I've got a letter of mark from the English and nothing else, which is what I would expect. And fine help. The age of 25. The plug. Really clunky, by the way. That seems to do nothing. Presumably the map. Continue, okay. Sail ho! Right, we're in English waters. Merchantmen. English merchantmen. Any news? No new news. We're just going to bring this ship back. Sail ho! But you'll notice that there's no real load times that we're dealing with. Which is nice. Even merchant men. So you go at the speed of your slowest ship. Which unfortunately for us is that merchant men. Oh, Port Royal's on the side of Hispaniola, that's right. Is this Hispaniola? No, this is Puerto Rico. Right? I can't remember now. Void Shoals, I have a big ship. Land ho! Go into the harbor. See, I'm not actually being attacked this time. Alright, I need to sell goods before I sell the ship. Otherwise, the goods get chucked into the harbor. So, for reference, the real Port Royal. Had a major earthquake and sank into the ocean, basically. <laughs> Alright, that... Sell the ship. Please sell the merchantmen. You cannot sell your last ship for reference. And sloops are probably the best ship in the game. Go visit the governor. Recognition of your brave and loyal service to the English crown. I do gladly confer upon you the title of Ensign. I have news of your long-lost sister, the governor says. The evil pirate Mendoza, Count Mendoza knows his sister as well. He was last seen in the city of Santa. So yeah, that's basically the plot of the game. So you're trying to find your lost family. Your pride at being made an English Ensign. Always a rowdy crew. They want some more food. I tend to try to keep 20 food on me. But anyway. Now we should be able to save. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, that's the CD32 version of Pirates. Um, I'm going to be trying... All right, Pirates Gold. Sorry, need to be specific. And that will be it. I'll talk to you next time, Internet.
All right, and this time we've got a bit of a treat. The Nether hacked version. That you can't see, there we go. garbage. This is the Sega Genesis version of Pirate's Gold. I didn't realize this existed. But this looks a lot like the, the CD32 version, which I find interesting. Obviously, the music's different. But I mean, look at it. This looks really similar to the CD32 version. Really, really similar, although the font is harder to read. I am somehow even worse at fencing on this version, and I don't know how. You li you're literally just pressing buttons and moving left. I am having to stab this guy a lot, just saying. Pretty sure his shirt should have already turned red. Port Royal? Welcome to Port Royal. Wow, this actually runs at a higher frame rate than CD2, uh, CD32 version, doesn't it? Yep, as usual, war with Spanish and Dutch. Although that font is terrible. Go to the tavern. My promising plans. Apparently that's cancelled. some visual tearing. Oh, and some garbage on the screen as well, but um, I'm playing an emulator that is kind of edited for being widescreen based. I think this is a bad idea. That's the reason why there's garbage on the left and right side. So, hold on. Let me try this with a better emulator. Alright, that's a little better. Sorry, I had it set for that widescreen hack thing by accident. That definitely does not work in this. Sail ho! Investigate. Merchant Man is probably English, yeah. Let's start heading towards Santiago. Sail ho! Ooh. Ooh, it's the cowardly pirate Major Clinton! He's chasing us, Captain. Not aiming very well. There, yeah, that time I hit. Let me scroll it back there. How did I miss? How did I get missed? I don't understand. Maybe it's because of my difficulty or something. Still damage, all right. Not actually sure how to put up, or how to take down the battle sails in this case. It's something I would look up. Lost a mast. Yeah, this is probably a good time to ram you. Oh, Ram, you! You spot Major Clinton approaching. Rapier, of course. Oh, God. So, yep, you can see number of people, and morale is just a smiley face. You don't actually get to see um, 
what you call it, the like actual Yep. All right. So yeah, the this is very similar to the CD32 version, only fonts a bit different and I think it moves faster. That could just be my emulator. Um, we're going to actually sync her. Uh, you're ransom now. Taking all of your cannon. No. Oh, it's backwards! I just noticed. And then we're gonna fill up on food. The rest gets left behind. I'll take your crew. And let's sail back. Land ho! Sail in town. Sell some stuff. Apparently, I'm not Captain Incognito in this case. I am name. Bold capture of a pirate sloop. Sign up even more crew. Doing this short anyway. And am I recording? Yeah, I am. But hey, I've brought you that despicable pirate Major Clinton. And I am now an ensign. An evil Spaniard De Nerva? De Nerva? In Gibraltar. Gibraltar? Gibraltar is really far away from the Caribbean. Must be a different Gibraltar. Anyway, that's it for this version. Okay, bye. And this is Sid Meier's Pirates. Um, well, let me just exit and relaunch it. Get the full experience. I do, in fact, own this game too. And it's not going to record the video, is it? Oh, now it was going to. Whatever. Good enough. Okay. So, unfortunately, this is as high resolution as it gets. Um, it is slightly scaled because I'm recording all of these at 1080p at the moment, but that was probably a mistake, but oh well. Um, just hit enable everything. Uh, there are ways of making this game slightly prettier, but not really all that much. Drop Master Volume down a bit. Okay. So, this game was made in 2004, for reference. I know the copyright says 2005, that's just the Steam version. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ports of this one, too, on top of everything else. And yes, everything is subtitled. Marquis de la Mont. I think this is supposed to be your family, by the way. The Marquis himself arrived to bearing ill tidings. The fleet had been lost! The debt. It's a different um, scenario starting out, basically. Where rather than being like poor farmers that sold yourself into becoming an indentured servant in order to get over to the new world, you already exist in the new world. You've been living there for a while. Let's try. 
turned on before. That might be a problem. I may end up having to control this with mouse. And everybody speaks Simlish for reference, so if you can't hear what they're saying, that's because you can't hear what they're saying. But I am, as usual, Mr. Incognito. And this is the point where you choose whether you, who you're going to sign up with. Uh, if I remember right, in this version of the game, you pretty much always want to sign up with the Dutch. Oh no, you actually are in England. Okay. For some reason, I thought you were already on the the new um, in the new world. Ah, uh, yes, because that's a great way of handling things. Gotta love those wooden figures. And the crew mutinies! Roar! Ah, uh, yes, firing a cannon on your own ship. Brilliant. you gave the captain a dinghy. You'll notice there was no fencing requirement at the start this time. Fiery. We're flying pirate colors? Really? Okay. That's not a thing, but sure. And yes, it is double letter box, just like it appears. It's the rate, or I should say it's both pillar boxed and letter box, because this is supposed to be a 16 by 9 FMV on a game that only supports 4x3 resolutions natively. So, yeah, that's dumb. And Martin? So, for reference, this game runs at 30 frames per second, no matter what. I know this recording's at 60 frames per second, but that's because I'm recording them all at the same frame rate and resolution. At war with the Spanish and English. I have a letter of Mark. St. Kitts, which is a short, short distance to the southeast. Got it. See, they even give you maps. That helps. Ooh, juicy. You can tell from the grapes. Until next time, Mr. Incognito. Go to the tavern. Well, of course we're going to grab. Welcome aboard, mates. A weather glass. But I don't have enough money for it. Bad. Chat up the barmaid, which tells us about the sixth most notorious pirate in the Caribbean. That's the one that will be pursuing us for a bit, most likely. A real beauty. So this game does replace, and this is a remake including the fact that they've replaced some of the systems. Checking status, we have 600 gold, and we are content. So, we can upgrade our sails to be cotton sails, so let's do that. Oh, hey, look, there's that English bark that they're referring to. So, unlike in Pirates Gold or Pirates, you can actually see the ships in the game. Always try to do a slim profile. 
impossible. I only have one cannon left, that's fine. But they just surrender. A um, healthy haul of gold and plunder are yours for the taking. Yar. At least they have a take all button now. Um, okay, that ship is somewhat damaged, but we're also right next to uh, town. But you will notice that it's following us now. And it is actually possible, going to the shipwright, pushing over to the bark, and selling the bark. So for reference, we can sell it for 165 and repair it for 210. So if it we got a one to one, it would be 375. It's 375. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, we need to sell cargo first. Now we can consult with the shipwright. Sell that piece of garbage. Is it in the tavern? Tell me more. So we get information about cities. Unfortunately, the person that was back there is not there anymore. That sucks. Let's talk to the governor immediately. I think I need to kill more ships, though. Hey, look, it's an English smuggler. Queen Anne's Revenge. And I am on the revenge. Sloop versus sloop. It's a sloop off. But yeah. Ship combat's a little more difficult. She struck her colors. But yeah, you get the idea. It's a bit faster paced than the other one. Hint, hint. You can go level up. The upgrade doesn't make sense, but um, we need to trade with the merchant. Sell this stuff. We don't need that much food. 20 tons is sufficient. Shipwright. Sell that second ship. Not worth it. Fuck the governor. Indeed. But hey, look, I am now a captain. So I get, like, little marks on myself and make that goofy-looking grin. But, yeah, it's basically the same game, just reimagining. Oh, the dancing minigame. Dancing minigame, which is what the Grand Ball does, uh, is infamous for being... Completely illogical and incomprehensible. But anyway, that's the game. I have earned my first fame point, apparently. I am famous. Anyway, that's it. Um, this is going to be the only one of the re-remake of Pirates I'm going to record, because I don't own any of the others. There's a lot of different releases of it, but, uh, yeah.
I could play the Xbox version. I do own an Xbox 360, and also Xbox simulators are a thing. But I do own an Xbox 360, so I could play that version. If I can actually find where in the world my PSP went, I could play the PSP version. Um, if I owned it. But the Mac version is not possible for me to play. iOS version is not possible for me to play. And the Windows Phone version... Who owns a Windows Phone? Anyway. Yep, see ya. And the final one of these. Surprise, surprise! We are playing... The Wii version of this. I have... Yeah, the videos are messed up in emulation. I do have an actual Wii, so I'd probably be playing that. But this is going to be easier. Fun fact. This game actually runs at 60 FPS on the emulator. For some reason, it's not using my gamepad. No, it should be able to. Let's use my mouse, which is fine if I could actually point at anything. Keyboard, keyboard works. Okay. Right. Okay, keyboard and clicking, apparently. Well, I will figure this out. But um, this is being internally upscaled to 1440p, then downscaled again because I'm recording all of these at 1080p. I could apparently customize. Okay. Go with a red head. I'm thinking that. Ooh. I could be of different textures and I could have beards. Yes. Done. I don't even care about anything else. Ooh, I can customize my ship as well. Our ship's gonna be made of rosewood. Purple? Oh, it's apparently the purple of the ship. Okay. This is not in the cannon. Feels like having DLC, but actually, I think a normal cannon slot is better. Ooh, what do I have? Figure heads, Poseidon, a mermaid, Phoenix, a one-winged Phoenix, apparently, Gargan, Eagle, Devil, Lion. Um, we're going with a one-winged Phoenix. Anchor. Hold tartly. Flag. I actually can customize the flag. Thank you, game. It includes a lot of classic pirate flags. I appreciate this. We're going with that flag. And the top observer. Nothing but the best. Sail colors? Ooh, we're going with black sails. Golden trident. There we go. Advance the sailing. Apparently, that button. Ooh, load times, though. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at the zoom. I can't see anything. 
Is this seriously the zoom level? Is there like options that I have? Okay, I appreciate the spyglass, but you know, I'd much appreciate not having to have a spyglass. Okay, are there options? Options. Goals. Zoom in, zoom out. It's deep. Okay. I need to figure out what they did with the deep. Ah, there we go. That's still not very far. All right. Interesting running this at 60 FPS. in like i said the load times are a bit weird but i do like being able to actually customize things oh right it uses the wii mote for fencing always right here that's ducking yeah. Anyway, that's the Wii version, uh, or at least as much as I can emulate. I'm going, if I play the Wii version, I'll just use my Wii to play it. Although that means it'll only run at 480p. Hmm. Anyway, thought I should include that. Okay, bye.